Hello students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. Gayatri, working as Assistant Professor in Center of Advanced Study in Crystallography and Biophysics, University of Madras. The module we are going to learn today is about the Nobel Prizes in the field directly related to crystallography or the methods which have been employed for the crystallography. The objectives of this module will be to briefly outline the pioneering work in the scientific areas related to X-ray crystallography for which the pioneers were awarded the prestigious Nobel Prize. Nobel Prizes have been given either for the novel methods or for the novel structures determined using these methods as the three-dimensional structures of small and macromolecules are necessary to understand the structure and function of a molecule. Crystallography is an interdisciplinary subject and its impact can be well understood from the various Nobel Prizes awarded to the pioneers for their findings related to many fields that are related to X-ray crystallography of molecules. Before we go into the details of the Nobel Prize winners, let us have a look about what is a Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize is an annual international award given to honor the eminent persons in five different areas, physics, chemistry, medicine or physiology, literature and peace. Nobel Prize was established by a Swedish scientist, Alfred Bernard Nobel, in the year 1895. He was an inventor of dynamite and he had more than 350 patents. As an honor to him, a synthetic element was named as nobelium. Nobel Prize was first awarded in the year 1901 to Professor Wilhelm Connard Röntgen in the area of physics for the discovery of X-rays. X-rays were accidentally discovered when he was working with a cathode ray tube. In honor of his accomplishments, in the year 2004, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry named an element with an atomic number of 111 as a rongenium, which is a radioactive element with multiple unstable isotopes. In the year 1915, the Nobel Prize in Physics was given to William Henry Bragg and his son, William Lawrence Bragg. They equally shared the prize for the use of X-rays to determine the crystal structure. William Henry Bragg's work majorly concerned with the theory of ionization of gases and ionization curves of radium. He invented X-ray spectrometer to examine the diffraction of X-rays from crystals. William Lawrence Bragg derived a relationship between the wavelength of X-rays, interplanar spacing and the angle of diffraction. Bragg's relationship 2d sin theta equal to n lambda is a condition for diffraction maxima where lambda is a wavelength of x-rays, d is a interplanar spacing and theta is the angle of diffraction. After diffraction, the diffracted waves will superimpose on each other and the diffraction maxima will occur only when there is a constructive interference of the diffracted waves for which the condition is 2d sin theta equal to n lambda. More details are given in module 4. Charles Glover Bakla discovered the characteristic X-rays and he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in the year 1917. He showed that the secondary emission is of two kinds, one consisting of X-rays which are scattered unchanged and the other a fluorescent radiation characteristic of a particular substance. Bakla made remarkable contributions on the absorption and photographic action of X-rays and he also demonstrated the relationship between characteristic X-rays and the corpuscular radiation that accompanying it. He has also shown that the applicability and limitation of quantum theory in relation to the Rongian radiation. In the year 1914, Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Max von Lowe for proving that the diffraction of X-rays happened by crystals. His research was also in other areas like optics, quantum theory, superconductivity and also theory of relativity. In connection with the diffraction of X-rays by crystals, Lowe derived the conditions for which he named as Lowe equations. 
all the three Lowe equations must be satisfied simultaneously for the diffraction to occur in three dimension. You will study more about the Lowe equations in the module that module three that deals with Lowe diffraction. Linus C. Pauling was awarded the Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry in the year 1954 for his notable contributions and research in the nature of chemical bonding and also for its application to the structure elucidation of complex substances. He has written a very good textbook titled The Nature of Chemical Bond which is a useful resource. In molecular structures, the intramolecular hydrogen bonds stabilize the molecule whereas the intermolecular hydrogen bonds promote the crystal packing. Hydrogen bonds as we know they play a major role in structural stability and also in ligand interactions. In the year 1958, he presented to the United Nations the celebrated petition signed by 9,235 scientists from all over the world protesting for further nuclear testing. In the same year, he published a book, No More War, which is a book that represents the rationale of abandoning not only further use and testing of nuclear weapons, but also to stop the war itself, which proposes the establishment of World Peace Research Organization within the structure of the UN to tackle the problems of preserving the peace. He has received second Nobel Prize in the year 1962 in the field for peace. Linus C. Pauling received two unshared Nobel Prizes, one in chemistry and one for peace. In the year 1936, Nobel Prize in chemistry was awarded to Debye for his work on diffraction of X-rays and electrons in gases. He also analyzed the effect of temperature on diffraction patterns of crystalline solids which is generally termed as debye valor factor. This factor is also related to the mean square displacement of the vibration of amplitudes. In the beginning of 19th century, after the discovery of X-ray diffraction by crystals, the three-dimensional structure of many small molecules have been obtained. At that time, Macromolecular crystallizations were not attempted as the number of atoms in macromolecules go beyond few thousands. But Dr. J.B. Sumner crystallized an enzyme urease in a pure form and he also devised a general crystallization method for enzymes for which the Nobel Prize was awarded to him in the field of chemistry in the year 1946. In the same year, the Nobel Prize was been shared by James Batchelor for the discovery that enzymes can be crystallized and the other half have been equally shared by John Howard Northup and Stanley for the preparation of enzymes and virus proteins in a pure form. In the year 1962, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Kendrew and Perutz for the studies on structures of globular proteins. Kendrew saw the structure of myoglobin in the year 1957 at low resolution of 6 angstrom and later in the year 1959 he saw the structure of myoglobin at a high resolution of 2 angstrom. Perutz determined the hemoglobin structure initially at low resolution data of 5 angstrom and in 1968 he saw the structure at a high resolution. Hemoglobin is an oxygen transporter. And the three-dimensional structure of hemoglobin explains the structure-function relationship of the molecule. In the year 1962, Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine has been awarded to Crick, Watson and Wilkins for the helical structure determination of DNA. This prize was awarded to them for the discovery concerning the molecular structure of nucleic acids and its importance for information transfer in living material. The formation of double helical structure of DNA with specific pairing of organic bases opened the most spectacular possibilities for unraveling the details of the control and the transfer of genetic information. Thus many proteins are globular in shape. In 1972, Nobel Prize in Chemistry was shared by Anfinson, Moore and William Strain for the discoveries on protein folding. Anfinson proposed that the information that determines the tertiary structure of a protein resides in the chemistry of its amino acid sequence and also for his contribution on the studies on ribonucleases. 
Moore and Stein contribution was to understand the connection between chemical structure and the catalytic activity of the active center of the ribonuclease molecule to understand the protein folding phenomena the unfolding pathways were analyzed and the studies on protein folding still continues the compact globular shape arises due to the intramolecular hydrogen bonds water mediated hydrogen bonds and mainly due to the disulfide bridges that are present between the cysteine residues in the year 1976 Lipscomb was awarded the Nobel Prize in the field chemistry for the studies on the structure of boranes. He also studied the pure electrically neutral borane molecules and investigated the charged borane molecules and other molecules that are closely related to boranes. He has also done notable contribution in the structural studies and also to understand the mechanism of enzymes. Dorothy Crawford Hartkin was awarded the prize in chemistry in the year 1964 for solving the structures of many biochemical substances including vitamin B12 her pioneering work helped to unravel the structures of proteins including insulin which she studied for more than 30 years in the year 1988 the nobel prize in chemistry was awarded to desenhofer huber and michel for their work on the three dimensional structure of a photosynthetic reaction center Michel succeeded in crystallizing the membrane bound protein and the structure was determined by Desenhofer and Huber which clearly illustrated the reaction center in a membrane in a photosynthetic bacterium they are the first to succeed in unraveling the full details of how a membrane bound protein is built up by revealing the structure of molecule atom by atom the protein is taken from a bacterium that uses sunlight to build the organic substances like how the green plants and algae does The organic substances serves as a nourishment for both plants and animals. Using the oxygen in the air, they consume these nutrients through what is termed as a cellular respiration. The conversion of energy in photosynthesis and also in cellular respiration takes place through the transport of electrons through a series of proteins which are bound in a special membranes. These membrane bound proteins are very difficult to crystallize, but in the year 1982, Michel succeeded in doing this. and the structure was determined in collaboration with Desenhofer and Huber between the years 1982 and 1985 as seen earlier single crystal x-ray diffraction study involves a crystal of dimensions of about 0.2 mm at least in all three dimensions when there is a growth of crystal in two dimensions which is called as a platy crystal one has to use electron microscopy for obtaining the structure In the year 1982 the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Dr A Clark for the development of crystallographic electron microscopy and discovery of the structure of biologically important nucleic acid and protein complexes he has also shown that the three dimensional reconstruction of the object can be obtained by collecting the images or pictures in several different orientations of projection His method made it possible to determine the structures at high resolution of functionally important molecular aggregates. In the year 1985, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was shared by Professors Hoffman and Kohl for the development of direct methods to solve the three-dimensional structure of small molecules. Herbert Hoffman was the first mathematician to receive the Nobel Prize. They developed the procedure called direct methods in the year 1953 itself for solving the phase problem which which is a bottleneck in x-ray crystallography phase problem means non availability of individual phases of bragg reflections from the experimental measurements which are required to calculate the electron density to simplify the mathematical derivations they assumed non vibrating point atoms and this assumption was seriously objected by many physicists during that time their work was not recognized until the year 1966 when professor isabella kal the wife of professor jerome kal proved that how the structure of a dipeptide could be solved by using direct methods soon after this discovery computer programs came into existence for determining the molecular structures direct methods means solving the phase problem directly by using the 
observed experimental intensities only through phase relationships. Tangent formula is used to obtain the individual phases. As on today, more than 7 lakh molecular structures have been determined using this method. They are generally meant for solving small molecular structures. In the year 1997, Nobel Prize in Chemistry was given for the studies on the enzymatic mechanism that underlies the synthesis of adenosine triphosphate and also for the discovery of an iron transporting enzyme. The prize was awarded to Boyer, Walker and Skow. Boyer and Walker shared half the prize for their work on how the enzyme ATP synthase catalyzes the formation of ATP. Skow received the half prize for the discovery of the enzyme sodium potassium stimulated ATPase which maintains the balance of sodium and potassium ions in the living cells. ATP consists of nucleoside adenosine which is linked to three phosphate groups. On removal of the outermost phosphate group, ADP is formed, while at the same time the energy released can be employed for other reactions. Conversely, with the help of the energy, an inorganic phosphate group can be bound to ADP and forms ATP. Considerable quantities of ATP are formed and consumed. For an example, at rest, an adult converts a daily, a quantity of ATP corresponds to about one half body weight and during hard work the quantity is still more. Most of the ATP synthesis is carried out by the enzyme ATP synthase. At rest, sodium, potassium and ATPase uses a third of the ATP form. Sodium, potassium, ATPase was the first molecular pump to be discovered. Following the discovery of this ATPase, other ion pumps have been discovered which have uh, similar kind of functions and similar structures. Like for example, calcium ATPase in skeletal muscle which participates in the control of muscle contraction and HK ATPase which produces hydrochloric acid in the stomach. In 2003, Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Agri Mackinnon. They shared the prize for the discovery of water channels and also for the structural and mechanistic studies of ion channels. They have explored the family of molecular machines like channels, gates, valves, which are necessary for the cell to function. It was in 1998 when Roderick Mackinnon succeeded for the first time in showing what ion channels look like at atomic level, an achievement which Together with Agri's discovery of water channels opened up entirely new research area in structural biology and also in biochemistry. The medical consequences of Agri's and Mackinnon's discoveries are very important as number of diseases can be attributed to poor functioning in the water and iron channels of the body. With the help of fundamental knowledge of how they look like and what they do. There are now new possibilities for developing new and more effective pharmaceuticals. Nobel Prize in Chemistry in the year 2006 was awarded to R. D. Kornberg. He is the son of Arthur Kornberg who was the Nobel Prize winner in medicine in the year 1959. R. D. Kornberg was awarded the prize for his work on molecular basis of eukaryotic transcription, the process by which the genetic information from DNA is copied to RNA. He has also solved the three-dimensional crystal structure of RNA polymerase at atomic resolution. He has done the fundamental studies that concern about how the information stored in genes is copied and then how they are transferred to other parts of the cell that produce the proteins. Constant transcription of the genetic information in the DNA is a central process for all living beings. DNA molecule itself lies well protected within the nuclei of the cell. The genetic information needs to be copied and transferred into a messenger RNA that carries the information into the protein producing regions of the cell. These proteins in turn construct the organism and its function. If the transcription process is interrupted somewhere, then the organism will soon die because all protein production in the cell stops. Kornberg was the first to create the actual picture of the process of eukaryotic transcription at the molecular level, which is an important group of organism eukaryotes. In 2009, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Venkatraman Ramakrishnan, Thomas Tates and Yadayonath for their work on the structure and function of ribosomes. 
they revealed how ribosomes translate the DNA code to life. All the three have used X-ray crystallography to determine the structures showing exactly where different antibiotics attack the bacterial ribosomes. The award was given for the studies of one of the life's core processes that is ribosomes translation of the DNA information into life. Ribosomes produce proteins which in turn control the chemistry in all living organisms. As ribosomes are very crucial to life, they are major target for new antibiotics. Every cell in an organism contains DNA molecules. They contain the blueprints for how a human being or a plant or any living being look and function. These blueprints become transformed into living matter through the work of ribosomes. Based upon the information present in the DNA, ribosomes will produce the proteins. There are tens of thousands of proteins in the body and they all have different forms and different functions. They build and control the life at the chemical level. The prize was given for the tremendous research on the studies of the structure and function of ribosomes. In 2010, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for the groundbreaking experiments regarding the two-dimensional material graphene. The prize was shared by Gim and Novoselo. They found a way of transferring the ultra-thin flakes of graphene from scotch tape to a silicon wafer, the material of microprocessors. It's the thinnest ever but the strongest material. As a conductor of electricity, it performs as good as a copper. As a conductor of heat, it outperforms all other known materials. It is almost completely transparent but very dense that not even the helium, the smallest gas atom, can pass through it. Graphene is a form of carbon. We all know that carbon is the basis of all known life on Earth. Gim and Novoselo extracted the graphene from a piece of graphite such as is found in ordinary pencils. Using regular adhesive tape, they managed to obtain a flake of carbon with a thickness of just one atom. This research was done at the time when many believed that it was impossible for such thin crystalline material to be very stable. However, with graphene, physicists can now study a new class of two-dimensional materials that have its own unique properties. Graphene makes the experiments possible that give new twists to the phenomena in quantum physics. Also, a vast variety of practical applications now appear, including the creation of new materials and also the manufacture of innovative electronics. Graphene transistors are predicted to be substantially faster than today's silicon transistors and the result is more efficient. In 2011, Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded for the discovery of quasi-crystals. The Nobel Prize was given to Sheshman. He discovered icosahedral phase, which opened a new field of quasi-periodic crystals. A quasi-periodic crystal or a quasi-crystal is a structure that is ordered, but it's not periodic. His work in the area of quasi-crystals ordered crystalline materials that lack the repeating structures won Nobel Prize for him. In 2012, Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Lefkowitz and Koblika for the studies on G-protein coupled receptors. They have shared the prize for the groundbreaking discoveries on the structure and function of GPCRs through which the cells sense and respond to the signals. More than 80% of drug targets belong to GPCR family. For a long time, it remained a mystery how cells could sense the environment. Lefkowitz started to use a radioactivity in 1968 in order to trace the cell receptors. He attached an iodine isotope to various hormones and he managed to unveil several receptors, among those a receptor for adrenaline beta-adrenergic receptor. His team of researchers extracted the receptor from the cell wall and gained an initial understanding of how it works. During 1980s, Kobilka joined the team and accepted the challenge to isolate the gene that codes for beta-adrenergic receptor from a human genome. They realized that there is a whole family of receptors that looks more or less alike and function in the same manner and has been referred to as GPCRs. More than 1000 genes code for GPCR receptors that play a major role in light sensitivity, flavor, order, etc. In the year 2011, Kobilka achieved another breakthrough. He captured an image of the adrenergic receptor at the exact moment that 
when it is activated by a hormone and sends the signal into the cell. This molecular image is a masterpiece of the result of decades of research. In year 2013, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded for Karplus, Levitt and Warshall for the development of multi-scale models for complex chemical systems. They developed powerful programs to understand and predict the chemical processes. They also successfully developed methods that combine quantum and classical mechanics to calculate the chemical reactions by using computers. This Nobel Prize has become a starting point for further theoretical developments for more accurate models and also in applied studies. The methodology has not only been used to study the complex processes in organic chemistry and also in biochemistry, but also for heterogeneous catalysis and theoretical calculations of the spectrum of molecules dissolved in liquid, that is in a solution state. The work carried out by Karplus, Levitt and Warshall opened up a fruitful relation between the theory and the experiment that has found solution for many unsolvable problems. In the year 1991, Nobel Prize in Physics was given for discovering the methods in simple systems that can be applied to polymers and liquid crystals. The award was given to Professor Gaines. He discovered that the methods developed for studying ordered phenomena in simple systems can be generalized to more complex forms of matter, in particular to liquid crystals and polymers. He also developed the fundamental physical theory of liquid crystals which underpin today's understanding of the beautiful and delicate state of matter ubiquitously found in commercial flat panel liquid crystal displays. In the year 1996, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded for the discovery of fullerene form of carbon and this award was given to Professors Curl, Croto and Smalley. They discovered the new form of carbon element in which the carbon atoms are arranged in a closed shell called as a fullerenes. Fullerenes are formed when vaporized carbon condenses in an atmosphere of inert gases. They performed the experiment together with the graduate students during a period of 11 days in the year 1985. By fine-tuning the experiment, they were able to produce the clusters of carbon containing 60 atoms and also clusters with 70 atoms. So students, let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. Nobel Prizes that are awarded for the pioneering works of eminent scientists for the scientific achievements which are directly or indirectly use the crystallographic techniques and methods are briefly outlined in this model. The Nobel Prizes seen in this module are awarded for the novel methods in X-ray crystallography or the novel structures determined by using these methods. The greatness of the subject X-ray crystallography can be understood from the number of Nobel Prizes awarded so far. Thank you for watching.